So hello everyone. Um, just a very short video today and it's pretty much an introductory video just about the part of the brain that's mainly affected in our FTDs. So there are different types or subtypes or otherwise known as variants of frontotemporal dementia but typically they all involve the frontal lobe of the brain. So this is um, pretty much for those who don't know a lot about the brain structure. So there's different parts of the brain and there's different lobes and there's two hemispheres. So when we're talking about frontal lobe, it's fairly obvious. Um, as the name says, it's at the front. So it's the part of the brain that sits just in the, you know, behind our forehead. And it's responsible for those higher functions, otherwise known as executive functions. And these sorts of functions are the, the things that set us aside from the animals, the, the functions that make us uniquely human as a species. And those functions include things like attention and problem solving, hypotheses, testing, social cognition and judgment. Also, a lot of our personality is comprised in the frontal lobe and some other functions such as insight and consequential thinking. So that ability to, to think ahead, planning and, and judgment. It's considered a relatively recent evolutionary development. So if you subscribe to evolutionary theory, which most people do these days, I however do not, but um, according to evolutionary theory, the frontal lobes are the last part of um, neural cortex development in our, in our evolutionary processes. So humans are the most evolved species and the frontal cortex or the frontal lobe is um, the latest and most evolved part of the brain. It also is the last part of the brain to mature and develop. And this shouldn't come as too much of a surprise for those of us who have teenage children. Their brains are still developing. They're still a work in progress. And they can keep developing the frontal lobe up until about 25 years of age. So when your 18 year old pea plater is out there doing silly things and um, not really engaging in problem solving to the best of what we think is their ability um, and is not demonstrating very sound consequential thinking skills, the ability to think ahead, the what if um, and the judgment and the planning. Oh, well, they just may have a biological excuse. Their brains are still developing and it is that very part of their brain um, that forms, that allows them to, to develop the insight, the judgment and um, that higher executive function. Uh, so they're not without excuse. Uh, some of what we know about the frontal cortex, uh, the frontal lobe, happened through a very unfortunate incident on a foreman who was working on the railroad some time ago um, and he's well known in the medical and psychological literature because of his accident and what that accident actually told us about the brain and in particular the frontal lobe of the brain. Phineas Gage, ah yes, well what happened to him? As you can see from that he got a large rod um, propelled up through his face, through the orbital um, socket, so the back of his eye, and up protruding through the, the front of his skull. And the injury that he incurred was pretty much the entirety of that frontal lobe. So this lesion that he incurred, I mean, it was amazing that he even survived through this given the, the um, medical provisions of that day. But his family and his re friends reported some really strange behaviour uh, as a result of this injury. His behaviour became reportedly socially inappropriate. So he did things that before the injury, pretty morbidly, he didn't do. He acted in ways that were quite embarrassing and um, curious to his family. So whilst it looked like Gage 
it really wasn't him. It was like he had had um, a personality transformation. He displayed consistently poor social judgment and he brought some disrepute on his family with some of the things that I've read about. But yeah, I guess what they saw was a person in the same body but with a very different um, personality and way of behaving. And isn't that just like people that get uh, frontotemporal dementia? The part of their brain, the very same part of their brain that's getting damaged, albeit for a different purpose, it's neurodegeneration. So, you know, it, it's not that acute kind of injury that Phineas Gage endured, but it is a deterioration of the frontal the frontal lobe, um, a degeneration, an atrophy. So the part of their brain that's responsible for the same sort of skills, the, the social skills, the insight, the judgment, the planning, uh, the executive function is eroding away. And sometimes we see that same presentation. It looks like our loved one. We think it's them, but for all intent and purposes, it's like a, a completely different person in many ways. They do things that before the dementia they would not have done. Um, I'm not going to go through the rest of these slides. It goes into a lot of uh, clinical sort of information and um, brain regions. But I just really wanted to distinguish um, frontotemporal dementia from other dementias because there's actually over a hundred different types of diseases that cause dementia. And dementia in itself is not a disease. It's a symptom of some other disease. So in frontotemporal dementia, it's a particular tau protein that's causing the atrophy and the neurodegeneration. In Alzheimer's disease, which is the most prevalent um, presentation of dementia, I think, for, I think it accounts for about 80%, perhaps even more of the dementias, it's... Um, due to, to tangles and plaques that form in the brain. And I think the second um, most prevalent type of dementia is the Lewy body dementia. And um, the, the, the Lewy bodies, the, the proteins that develop in that dementia were named after the person who found that. Much like frontotemporal dementia was founded by a guy called Pick. And so you sometimes hear of FTD being referred to as Pick's disease. But what we know about the different types of dementia is that there's different origins, there's different um, parts of the brain being affected, and there's a different type of neural process behind it, a different type of protein accumulation, neurofibrillary tangles or plaques that are forming. And Whilst all dementias sort of result in a deterioration of the brain, they and they all end up, unfortunately, in the same place, they just take different pathways through the brain until eventually uh, pretty much the entire brain is impacted in some way. Frontotemporal, so you also hear about the temporal lobe, the, the parts of the brain that are on the side, is impacted um, in FTD and the limbic system which is deep in the brain also is connected to the frontal cortex and the limbic system is responsible for emotional regulation and some other social processing um, emotional regulatory skills. The, the temporal lobe, um, the left temporal lobe which is the dominant one is responsible for language both expressive and receptive so language production being able to speak and being able to understand what is said. And these three primary areas of the brain are sort of impacted by FTD. Uh, so it very much depends in dementia which part of the brain is impacted and by which sort of process. So whether it's a pick body, a Lewy body, um, or the plaque accumulation in Alzheimer's. But FTD, the, the third um, most prevalent dementia, affects estimates between 7 and up to about 15% with I think perhaps the, the general estimate being about 10% of all dementias are now recognised as FTD.
So that's just a very general overview of what FTD is, what part of the brain it affects and, and a little bit of how. If you do have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. You can put your questions on the group page or if it's a personal question, um, I'm more than happy to answer that if you want to send me a private message. So that's it for now and hopefully be able to provide another presentation soon. Okay, have a happy Peace Build Day. Bye-bye.